apetece Okay, now welcome back. So we've just seen the use of sins and fall. We insisted on the use of sins and fall. So now let's move on to something else. Now the present perfect is also used with the following words. It's something you should bear in mind. The present perfect. That is often associated with these words. For example, if in an exercise, when you have to do an exercise in which you are required to either use the present for the simple or the past simple, okay? Some clues that can help you know that you can use the present perfect is these words. When you see these words, words such as already, words such as um, ever, or never, or not yet, not yet, or um, it's the first time, it's the first Time. Okay. If you see these words in a sentence, think of the, the use of the present perfect um, simple. For example, you can say, have you, have you ever been to Mauritius? Have you ever been to Mauritius? Or, can say, I have never left the Comoros. I have never left the Comoros. Be very careful. Although these words are semantically synonymous. Actually, they mean jamais, but in, in English, we use ever in an interrogative sentence or in, in an affirmative sentence. For example, you can say it's, it's, the most, it's the most beautiful, beautiful, Lady, okay, I have ever met. Okay, in an affirmative sentence, especially when you have a superlative like this. Okay, so I repeat, ever is used in an interrogative sentence, like, in, like as in, have you ever been to Mauritius? Or in an affirmative sentence, when you have the use of the, uh, of the superlative, as in, is the most beautiful lady I have ever met. You cannot say I have never. When never is used in a negative sentence, like, I have never left the Comoros. I have never left the Comoros, and not I have ever, no, I have never left the Comoros. Okay? Right. Now, let's move on to part B of our lesson. Okay. In this case, the present perfect continues. 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 The present perfect continues. Okay. Present perfect con 
continuous. Very easy, okay? Now, as we did with the uh, first part, with the present perfect simple, again, to look at the way it is going, structured. Construction. Very easy. Use a subject. Subject can be a noun or pronoun, followed by have or has plus been plus plus the in form. In form. There is subject. It can be a noun or a pronoun, followed by have, depending on the subject, or has, plus been, plus the in form. Okay? Now, let's see, let's see the, uh, let's see the, uh, the uses, the, uh, the form, sorry. The forms, okay? Very simple. Affirmative. Affirmative. Okay? As an example, you can say, I, I have been, uh, I have been uh, teaching English. English. I have been teaching English. Interrogative. And say, have you, have you been, have you been working? Have you been working? Have you been working, for example? Or have you been teaching? Okay. And the negative form will be, for example, um, I have, or you can say, let's use another pronoun, say he, okay, he has not been listening. Okay. He has not been listening. The child, for example, or the student has not been listening. Okay. Have you been working? Have your parents been working? Okay. I have been teaching. You can see it's very, very easy as you can see. Now, okay. Now, let's move on to another point. In this case, it's used when we use the present perfect continuous. Okay? To make this. First, to allow you to make, to take stock. To allow you to take stock. When I, what I mean by to take stock, faire le bilan, I'm saying in French, take stock. Here, the speaker always thinks of both past and present. He or she is interested in the present result of a recent activity. So the speaker here, the speaker always thinks of both past and present. Pre present. Present. Okay?
he or she, or he, because if it is a, it can be a man, or she, if it is a woman, he or she is interested in the present result, the present result of a past action. Okay. Right, so we are going to have a short break, okay? We'll resume in a few moments. <laughs>